Welcome to the Center for U.S. War Veterans Oral Histories at the National Guard Militia Museum of New Jersey in Seagirt, a partner of the Library of Congress's Veterans History Project. Today is September 9th, 2015. I am Carol Fowler, Director of the Project. With me is Kaylee Logal, a Rutgers intern. Our honored veteran is Don Sherman, who served during the Cold War with the New Jersey National Guard from 1951 to 1957. He was with Headquarters Detachment 50th Armored Division. Thank you for wanting to be here today, Don. Your eyewitness account is considered a primary historical source and a valuable contribution to the Veterans History Project here. And good morning and welcome. Good morning. Don, take us back to life prior to service. What had you and your family been doing back in 1951 before you entered the service? I graduated from Manasquan High School in 1951 and went to work at our family business in Manasquan, W.F. Sherman and Son. Did anyone in your family serve before you? No. Okay, so how did you come to be in the service? At the time, they were getting, they were starting to draft for Korea. And I figured I would like to make my choice rather than getting told what I was going to be doing. I first went to uh, Lakehurst thinking that I would go into the Naval Reserve, but they were not taking anyone at the time. So I came to the Army Reserve, National Guard. Okay. And where did they first send you? Pardon? Where did they first send you? Well, at uh, here to Seagirt. And what kind of adjustment was it for you to go from civilian to military life? It was easy because it, in National Guard I was civilian most of the time. Oh, that's true. You had drill one weekend a month? I uh, One night a week, one weekend a month, three weeks in the summer. I say three because I always, I was in um, <clears throat> headquarters detachment of a supply company. And so we always went to the um, summer camp at, at Camp Drum one week early to draw material from regular army and then we would come home on the, re on the um, Let's see, we went up on the advance and came home on the later because we had to turn everything back into uh, regular army. Did you have boot camp? No? No. No boot camp. All right, so do you have any stories from back when you first joined? Or do, what are you, when you look back, what do you mostly remember? Well, I met, met a lot of nice fellas, and a, a lot of people that I knew were in the same unit. Friends of mine, people I knew. Uh, oh. Yeah. People from Manasquan? Yeah. Do you yeah. want to say any of their names? Oh, yeah. There's a, I've got the picture there. There's Bob Edick, Richard Woolley, um, Bob Allen. Uh, Bob Collins. There's there there any number in there that I could say were either in my class in school or were in school at the time I was in school. So that must have made it a lot easier, right? Oh, yeah. And so when you weren't in the guard, you were working at your family business? Yeah. So how did you come to get the job that you did in the guard, the specific MOS? They just assigned you that? Yep. Did you have to take any kind of test or anything? No. Okay. And what was a typical day like for you? On a, when we were in camp? Mm. Okay. Um, I was in an office. We were in class one, food. And we did a major uh, ration breakdown on paper. Each day we were told how many people each unit would have in it, and we had um, the daily, uh, I don't say, Allotment. what we were going to have, what they were going to have to eat that day. And we had the breakdown of 
how many, how much sugar per hundred, how much uh, flour, how much beans and peas and everything that's on the daily menu was broke down and, and we had how many it took to feed like a hundred men. So we would take the number of men, if they said they had a thousand men in their unit, and we had computers, manual ones, and we would break down how many pounds of sugar, how many cans of beans, how many whatever they were supposed to get for that daily, the daily um, menu, and we would do that on paper in the office. We would send it out to uh, A Company, which met right here. The B Company was in Freehold, but A Company was in the warehouses. We were in an office. So we did that work, turned it over to A Company. They got it picked out of the supplies there, and then each unit would come and pick up their daily rations for that day. Oh, okay. That's when, that's when we were in the Camp Drum. So you never had too much or not enough, you had exactly what you needed? The exact amount of food that you needed? I can't tell you that. Maybe in the warehouse, maybe they had more sugar or flour or coffee than they needed, but they had enough so that they, they had it down to give the proper amount to each unit. Mm -hmm. I'm interested in, you said, the computer. Can you describe it? Back in the 50s, early 50s, what did a computer look like? It looked sort of like an adding machine. Yeah. You pushed in a number and you twisted a, you put, twisted a handle and you, would, you could flip it over one to the next. And then, I, I, forget, I forget whether we had something to pull, but it was all mechanical. Right. N n nothing plugged in, because when we were in camp, we would do it out in the field, the ration breakdown. Oh, that's interesting. And what were living conditions like in the camp? Oh, fine. We were in barracks. Oh, not oh, tents. Oh, while we were in the field, we did have pup tents. Oh, I see. Yeah, that's what I thought. But we were in the barracks most of the time. Okay. Two-story barracks. Were they wooden? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Were they from a long time ago? World War II? Probably. Or? They were probably built during World War II. Right. And then there was quite a warehouse, um, a lot of warehouses, not only the food, but all kinds of stuff up there. I, I, we were always there in the summer, but it sounded like in the winter they had tremendous amounts of snow, snow up to the edge of the roof, uh, the edges of the roof. It, was, it must be Watertown, New York is where we were. Can't mm -hmm. So did you ever have to um, train on weapons or no? Yeah. Oh yeah? Yeah. We'd be in, in the, the office were issued carbines. The, most of them had the M1s, but uh, office personnel had carbines. Oh. They're shorter. Mm -hmm. Which did you prefer? Well, I always liked to shoot. I'd shoot whatever they gave me. <clears throat> um, the shooting range out here? Mm -hmm. We shot out here and then we had a, <clears throat> a rifle club in, within the guard and we shot between units and we shot right here in, these, in this garage. Oh my goodness. Mm -hmm. The uh, backstop was over against the far wall and we shot 50 feet. We shot 513 T's. 22 caliber, and then we would shoot with uh, Fort Monmouth. We would go uh, a different. Would you shoot across the lake? No, we were just in the building at night. At night, you would shoot into the feet, wall. Fifty feet. We, they had metal backstop. There. Oh, okay. Back in the bay. Right. Yeah. Right in. I guess. Either we moved the trucks or somebody had moved them when we, when we were going to be there on Monday nights or whatever it was. Oh, okay. 
Wow. And then we shout on the range, uh, just like once a year, you had to qualify. Right. And you had to qualify also for PT, right? You had to take a physical test? Um, well, we used to march and we used to do calisthenics and whatnot, so. Right. You would march just here on the base? Yeah, just, yeah. Mm -hmm. Some of the older guys in our unit had been in World War II, so we had some, some uh, good guys to keep us marching straight. Oh, yeah. okay. What would they say? Were they tough? No. They, no? Yes. One I can remember particularly was Russell Triber. He's, he's since died. He was in World War II. Yeah. <clears throat> but he... Uh, From Manasquan? No, he was uh, actually more... I guess they lived in West Belmar. Oh, okay. Somewhere like that. But, uh, he'd march us, you know. He was... His, his army experience from World War II made him, he was great at, you know. Do you have any other stories from being in the service? A typical day here in Seagirt? Mm, it was evenings. Oh, okay. We met here in the evening, Monday nights, from about seven to nine, let's say. Just once a month? Um, no, I think, I think it was almost once a week. Yeah, I guess so. I think it was every Monday night. Mm -hmm. Headquarters was right over near where the, uh, uh, there used to be a mansion here. They used to call it the Summer White House. And uh, we were right, our headquarters building was right over there. Oh, okay. Did you ever go in the mansion? Yeah, I have been. Uh, <clears throat> as a matter of fact, they used to say, um, I guess some presidents did visit here and maybe, I don't know whether they stayed here in the summertime, it was a nice place, but um, I don't remember it being used very much, but um, it was um, in the building, there was a auditorium-like. It was like a dance floor with a balcony all around the top. Interesting. Yeah, it was pretty nice. I and uh, that. <clears throat> when they when they tore it down, somebody from the neighborhood, from the people that were tearing it down, bought the stair balusters. You know, the balusters on the stairway. Each stair. Each tread had four different ones. One was twisted, one was fluted, one was reeded, one was, and, <clears throat> and the newel posts. The newel posts that went around that balcony were cherry, and they're, they're really quite ornate. Wow. And uh, he contacted, and the brass locks out of the building. Uh, he got them, this guy. The brass locks? Door locks. Right. And uh, one time, he said, would you be interested in this stuff? And I said, sure. So I bought it off him. All of it? Mm. All the balusters and the newel post and the locks. Oh. I bet I still have locks in my attic. What did you do with the banisters? The balusters? Balusters. I don't know where they got to, but every, every step had, I think I said, four different ones on it. And, uh, the, and the newel post, the cherry ones. <clears throat> They still have a few of the balusters there, but I had bundles of them. I don't know what happened to them. But the uh, newel post, um, we go on vacation, and we were up, uh, I think we were up in like Maine one time, and my son called and said, there's someone in here who has a cherry newel post and would like to have another one made to match it, because I was in the woodworking business here in Manasquan, Sherman and Son, and uh, <clears throat> he said, 
I went up and looked at the ones you have upstairs there, and it matches it. And he said, would you want to sell it? And here she had bought one out of there, and I had the matching one. I think I sold to her for three hundred dollars. <laughs> Good for you. And you still had more, right? There may be another one or two I don't know up there. I say up there. It was upstairs, up on top of it. So you never used it for anything in your house? I never used it. We had a um, display here of parts of the mansion from Frances Brown. Her fa her husband had been the director of the center here, of the camp, of the army camp. The superintendent. I can't remember his I first know. name. Maybe they'd like to have a lock. Maybe. Huh? We could ask later when we're done. <laughs> I'll, I'll take a look in the attic and see if there are any more up there. Yeah, okay, sure. Thank you. They're really, uh, they were very nice. They're brass. Yeah. For the governor, it had to be good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I wanted to also ask you earlier, how did you come to learn about the project? How did I get you to sign up? Or did someone here ask you to sign up? I think I was contacted. Was it when you were visiting here, maybe? Did you fill it out when you were in the museum? A few I, ago? I have visited the museum. I don't know. Well, I thought you maybe got it from records or something. I didn't. Oh, okay. Maybe a friend of yours or someone who knew you. I don't know. Maybe your wife. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so um, how did you come to be in the Guard for six years? Well, they were drafting for Korea. Well, we, we already covered that. Oh. But how did you so come it, to it stay? It was either me wait to get drafted or make a choice and do what, what I could have an opportunity to do. And so I just decided to in, in, uh, investigate the National Guard. And I had friends that were already in it. And so when you enlisted, it was for six years? That was the deal? Three. Oh, so you re-upped. Or you were in the reserve? Am I now? No, I mean, you re-upped, but... Yeah, no. Well, I, I joined it for three years, and then when that was coming up, I just signed up for another three years. Why was that? The war was over, right? Um, it was just the Cold War then. Eisenhower years. I don't know, but I just stayed on this another three. Mm -hmm. And when you got discharged, did you use any of your benefits? Not really. Mm -hmm. I don't know what benefits were. Oh, th there wasn't a GI Bill for you? No? I don't know. Not... Did you join any veteran groups? No. No. Did you have any reunions with any of these guys you served with? Probably informal ones, right? They were your friends from, yep. from town? Just friends, yeah. Yeah, that's good. So how do you feel about your time in service, looking back? Oh, I think it was good. Do you have any message for the children today of the importance of peace in the world? Well, <clears throat> I think the National Guard was good because we never got called up like these guys that have gone to Iraq and Afghanistan and all over the place. Who are National Guard, yeah. Yeah. Behind you on the wall are New Jersey National Guard killed in action in Afghanistan and Iraq. Yeah, I mean. Yeah, so it's a different we time. Were, I guess we were available to them, but we just were never called up. Mm-hmm. It's a different time. You know about um, your detachment. It was mostly military. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, your detachment was mostly made up of um, World War II veterans. Is that true? I would say no. I'd no. say they were some. Some, okay. But most of us were uh, like right out of high school. Okay. And the ones that were World War II veterans, I mean, what, is, what was it like working with, you know, experienced soldiers like that? It was interesting. Okay. Um, 
and we used to drill, march, whatnot, and like I can remember one particular, Russell Triber, who had been, a, I think he was a Marine now, and uh, uh, he really got us good at, at marching. Marching, okay. Yeah. Did they share any stories um, in regards to their service during World War II? I mean, I didn't. I don't remember hearing too many. Too many. Okay. Were any of them, you know, combat tested, or were they mostly um, stateside? Do you know? I don't really know. Okay. Just curiosity. Yeah. And where are you done? Hmm? Where was this picture taken? Here in Seagirt? No, I think it was probably up at Camp Drum. Did he work with you? Mm hmm. Not, not in the National Guard. What was his name? Richard Woolley. Oh, yeah, you mentioned him earlier. He's a local guy. His father Here's worked at, at our shop, and he did too. Okay. Wow. We it's spent. a really small world. Beautiful picture. You scan that, I guess. Mm hmm. Yeah, it just died a couple of years ago. Oh, I'm sorry. Did you remain in contact after your years of service? Yep. Okay. Yeah. And here's your patch. It's got a lightning bolt and. I picked that up at a yard sale, but that was our, that was what we had on our uniform. What's well, on the front of that yellow? Right. It's yellow, blue, and red are the colors. There it is. And then it says Tracy Blues at the bottom. That's that's a picture of the same patch. Isn't yep. It? Yes. Hit that. Let me fill that too. Yeah, I was at a yard sale and it was a patch was laying in there as I bought it. <laughs> Do you know what it stands for, the symbol? Did you look that up? Was that in your research? Oh. I know it's got a tank on it, hasn't it? Uh, I believe so. It's the tracks of the yeah. tank. Yeah. Oh, good. Because okay. it was an armored division. Mm -hmm. Good. Now, I read that you guys were never mobilized um, for the Cold War, Korea, or anything like that. But I did read that you replaced your unit, the 50th replaced, um, was replaced by the 43rd Division, which was a Rhode Island detachment. You don't know anything? No? Okay. And the governor at the time was Governor Minor? Is that how you say it? Uh, yeah, I think so. Probably in there, right? So Robert, that means... Uh, Robert Minor? Yes. So that means the name of the camp was Camp Minor. They named it after the governor, the army camp. Here? Yeah, they usually named it after the governor, like Camp Edison, Camp Minor. Um, I don't remember them. Oh, OK. Call it here, Camp Minor. What were your opinions of your officers? Name my officers? No, what was your opinions of them? They were good. Yeah? Yeah. Are there any pictures of you in this book? Probably. Um, Kaylee hey. found it. I was able to find it. Oh, thank you so much, Kaylee. This is him right Oh, my here goodness. Good corner. for you, Kaylee. Here, come, come point to it. Okay. Right thank you here. so much. I was able to find you. <laughs> it's like, where's Waldo? Actually, headquarters detachment. One interesting thing. This is what she found. Did you did you see this? Yeah. Okay. Put the card back. There's a fella in that picture. Yeah. Whose daughter eventually married my son. <gasps> oh. Do you want, do you know where he is in the picture? Doughton. Don Doughton. Okay, they will find him. He's in the middle here. somewhere. Okay, so. He's actually somewhat by you. Somewhere up in here, I saw his picture. Mm -hmm. Well, they're kind of small pictures, but that looks like Bob Allen. There's Richard Woolley, Don Dalton, Ernie Reed, Bob Allen, Bob Collins. He was a year ahead of me in school. This is Johnson. He was our. Uh, our officer, our commanding officer where we are. 
M Morton, Mike Lassie, Joe Feller, uh -huh. no Noel Nero, he was Bob Eady, we grew up together. Patton. Here's this is Russ Triber right here. And what was the story about him? He he had been a Marine. Oh right. And he was the one that that always motivated you guys. Yeah. He we we kinda looked for him looked to him for advice. He was because he was older? Yeah. That's a lot of these guys. He's like your role model. Yeah. Do you guys have reunions at all or? Mm. Just informal ones, you said informal? No. Around town. Okay. Did you ask why he chose the National Guard? Mm -hmm. So you're happy that you chose the National Guard when you think back you didn't get into the Navy or there was a problem enlisting there. I forget, what was the story again about you tried the Navy? I was gonna, I was gonna try the Naval Reserve, but they weren't taking people at that time. Oh, I see. Because I went down to Lakehurst. But then, actually, when I found out so many of my friends were already right here, this was easy. I yeah. lived in Manasquansa. That's right. You could walk here, ride your bike. I could. What was it like uh, back then, coming through the gate? Was it stricter than it is now? Was it easy? Was there an actual gate, or? I don't know. When we came over every Monday night, I don't. I don't. We didn't really have to. We never came. Let's see. I think we came into headquarters before we even got to the gate. Oh yeah. Yeah. When we came in, it it was just right off to the left. There was a building there, the headquarters building. So there was a different way to come into the base other than the We gate. came in the same entrance, but we didn't, I don't think we went as far as where that guardhouse is now. We just got in and we came right over to the... Oh, okay, where, um, where they have picnics now? Looks different now. <laughs> they changed it, right? Yeah. What other stories do you have about the camp? Here. How is it for you to be here after so many years and um, 60 years? 60, more I than live 60. within about two blocks of the place, so it's... You know where Barlow's Flower Farm is? If you turn in that road there, and that's where I've lived for 72 years. 82 years. 82 years, yeah. Yeah. Um, although that was, that was a flower farm when I was a boy, Muller's. Yes. It's beautiful there. Yeah. That house, the street's named after him, right? Um, well, when you come in Old Squan, Old Squan Road, um, I don't know whether there's a Muller Street, but the house on the, when you turn in across from Barlow's, that large house on the corner, that was the Muller house. And the family lived there when I was young. Okay. They had, 17 kids. Oh my god. <laughs> wow. It's almost like a TV show, right? Yeah, it's like three bunch times four. That's a lot. The, Dugger, yeah. the Duggars have 19. Oh, I, aren't, isn't she pregnant with another one too? No, I don't okay. think so. Um, I see you have a couple of um, marksmanship badges. Pardon? You have um, several marksmanship badges on your discharge papers. Now, did you, pre, like prior to your military service, did you shoot? You know, with friends or anything like that? Oh, or? I, I, Did you shoot prior to your service or anything? Was it like, you know, you went out with your friends or anything like that? Or did you just kind of pick it up in I, service? I went uh, mainly like rabbit hunting. Okay. Oh. Pheasant hunting with my, with my father and grandfather. Okay. <clears throat> That's nice. And uh, then we always had... 22 rifle around the house. Okay. And my dad uh, bought me a Benjamin Air rifle. You pumped it up. Okay. When I was nine years old, <laughs> I wore it out. <laughs> <laughs> so quick, huh? Mm. It's a great question, it's, kid. Over the years, and uh, but then shooting was just, I like to shoot. Came natural to you? Yeah.
That's incredible. And I continued to shoot for 30 years, I shoot. Okay. But uh, <clears throat> I used to, in the, in the guard, well, we shot our carbines mm -hmm. for qualifying. And uh, we had a, a, um, a team, a small board team. Mm -hmm. And we, I guess I already said, we used to shoot right in this garage here. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then after I got out of the guard, there was a man that, a builder who came in our business. My dad said, you know, he's a, he's a rifle shooter. Why don't you ask him? So I asked him and he said, yeah. He said, if you just go out to West Freehold School on a Monday night, you walk around the back, down the steps, and he said, you'll find him in there. So <clears throat> I took my rifle one Monday night. I shot with them for, golly, till we broke up the league, I guess for my son shot with it. Okay. And uh, Jerry Frazee, he was in, a, in the guard with us. But uh, we shot with him probably for 30 years, I guess. Okay, and what's that gentleman's name? The guy that took you out there, or told you about the spot in West Freehold? Frank Arnold was his name. <laughs> Good memory. That's incredible. Hmm. Okay. When's the last time you went shooting? Has it been a while? Now I shoot with the grandkids. Oh, okay. I have a range in my cellar. Oh, okay. That's awesome. I mean, I... <clears throat> When we put an addition on the house and we put the the crawl space, I said I want it to go on out the back. So if you go around the back of my house, it looks like I have a, a sidewalk going to nowhere. That's the top of the range, so I could get 50 feet in in the cellar. Okay. <laughs> and That's awesome. The, the grandkids and I, we we shoot well. We're, we're BB guns now, but. Uh, just this weekend, we shot in the shot, and they, they put soda cans down there and fill them full of holes. And <laughs> yep. Mm-hmm. That's awesome. But I've sold all my target equipment. Okay. Sold my rifle, and, the, and I shot high power, too, for years. Did any of the kids or grandkids go into the service? No. No, nope. I had two boys, and they, neither one of them had any service. Mm -hmm. How, and were they Vietnam era, or were they a little later? Um, <clears throat> let's see, Don was born in 54. Okay, so... And, and the, Alan was uh, 61, maybe. Okay, so they missed the draft and all that. They, they yeah, no... Okay. Now, the Medal of Merit, the medals you were awarded, were those just general um, for the time that everyone was issued, or did you do something specific in order to earn those? I don't remember them being just shooting. I looked in my drawer. I thought I had a couple of little medals and mm -hmm. stuff, but I, I couldn't find them. That's she, okay. She said, bring them if you found them. No, that's okay. Time passes on, and we all put them places and forget about them. <laughs> Okay, that's incredible. Let's see. We could film that. What are we talking? 50. 51 to 57. Yeah. And here we are at 2015. Yeah. Right. It's a lot of time that lapsed. That's incredible, though. <clears throat> and you're retired now? From the mill work? Oh, we didn't talk about what he did after service. Okay. We stayed with the family business. Yeah. That's the woodworking business. Okay. Right. Architectural mill work. We need to talk about 250th Armored Quartermaster Battalion. We didn't have that information. We need that on this paper. So you just said that's... One thing you have now is lots of time. Yeah. That's awesome. All right. Well, Don, I just want to say that we're honored and humbled that you're here today to speak to us of your sacrifice and contribution that you made in service to your country. Thank you, and God bless you. Thank you. Okay. You know, for, <clears throat> for many years, 
And if I was at a place where they say, will veterans all stand up? I didn't used to stand up. You know, I thought I wasn't in the Army or the Navy or the Marines, but I was in the National Guard and I never thought. And then probably for the last 10 years, if they said it, I stood up. <laughs> Good for you. You deserve to. We appreciate your service. Thank you for being part of this project. <clears throat> Don also brought this book, the 50th Armored Division, New Jersey National Guard. Thank <laughs> you. 